my lovely, lovely imps, today we are going to be talking about a very serious issue, um, which is that Israel has uh, just declared war. Um, and uh, that's not a good thing. If you are even passingly familiar with the history of Israel and Palestine, uh, you know that this is one of the most, um, let's just say, a controversial issues in the entire world. It is one of the most controversial and uh, heavily discussed international uh, issues in the entire on the entire planet. Okay. Um, and last night, in the middle of the night, uh, some really wild stuff went down. And we're gonna talk about this, but I need to tell you that this is going to be a fairly, uh, a fairly heavy conversation. Um, we're going to be talking about violence. We're going to be talking about genocide. We're going to be talking about torture. Um, we're going to be talking about a lot of stuff. So just keep that in mind. If you want, if that's not the type of stuff that you're ready to listen to right now, it's okay to tune out. I'm, I give you my express permission. I'm just letting you know that we're gonna be talking about some heavy stuff here. Um, and uh, also, there is a very high likelihood that uh, that there will be vitriolic actors that appear in chat uh, uh, over this issue because it is an issue that very understandably in some cases um, uh, 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 pr prompts very intense emotion and very, very intense opinions, okay? Uh, first off, let me discuss what happened last night. Let's get the news portion out of the way. Um, uh, last night, my time, uh, 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 I'm not gonna try and do time conversions right now because doing that on the fly is very uh, stressful. But last night, um, we received word, the world received word from Israel that a series of uh, attacks had occurred. Um, first off, there was a massive barrage of rockets that were fired from uh, from within uh, uh, occupied Palestinian t uh, territory into Israel. Um, and we're gonna talk about all the facts of the situation, but um, if you're not super familiar with the history, I think it's important to understand that uh, Palestine is a, uh, a, a region and a state and a country uh the state of palestine is is not a recognized sovereign nation by a lot of the world but does technically exist um and palestine exists in a uh strange limbo of pseudo existence um where uh it is on, on paper, a occupied territory, a fully military occupied territory under martial law, the, the administrators of which is the Israeli military. Um, all of the citizens of Palestine uh, live under martial law and have uh, since the 60s. Um, and uh, that is going to, of course, we will get into more complications as that goes on. So. Last night, a whole bunch of rockets were fired um, from within uh, Palestine uh, into uh, Israeli uh, cities. Um, they hit a lot of targets. Not all of them were blocked. Um, as many people know, Israel has a very, very uh, advanced um, missile defense system. Uh, that basically uses um, computer technology to target and fire smaller missiles that will detonate and knock rockets out of the sky. Um, what this means is that most rocket attacks uh, uh, that are directed against Israel are very ineffective. Um, rockets tend to not hit any targets uh, and they tend to not kill anyone. Um, but this was not the case last night. Um, last night, enough missiles were fired all at once that it overwhelmed the missile defense system, it overwhelmed the warning system, and a lot of people were killed. It was not just missiles uh, that occurred last night. Um, as at 
last I checked, and I, it's very difficult to get a hard number on this, but at least 21 separate points along the Israel-Palestine border, uh, breaches were made uh, by uh, various construction equipment and vehicles that plowed through defenses on those spots on the border uh, and into Israeli uh, territory, uh, which were... Uh, the vehicles that passed through were full of uh, uh, militants with weaponry um, who then proceeded to drive through the streets of Israel and shoot at various things, uh, sometimes civilians, sometimes military, sometimes police. Um, this appears to have taken the IDF, the Israeli Defense Force, by complete surprise, um, which is fairly shocking given that uh, Israel is more or less constantly boasting about the strength of its intelligence uh, uh, um, apparatus. Um, it seems that, lit like, that literally no one uh, saw this coming. In this, at this particular moment, there was no, seemingly no advanced warning. They had not received intel that this was going to happen. And in fact, a lot of, uh, a number of Israel, Israeli military positions were uh, ambushed and the soldiers wherein, uh, therein were captured and killed. Um, it is uh, 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 a, a fairly, uh, like I said, a, a, a quite a large occurrence. Nothing, we haven't seen anything like this of this size for a very long time. The attacks were perpetrated by a group called Hamas, which is a, uh, a recognized, uh, a sort of universally recognized uh, Islamic terror group uh, that also uh, considers itself uh, a, a type of Palestinian re resistance group. And we're gonna get into all the details of that uh, as we go on. Um, but uh, yeah, a lot of, there are some people in chat saying it should have been impossible to surprise the IDF. Of course, we know that that's not ever true. Um, no intelligence apparatus can truly predict everything, but it does seem very surprising um, on a number of fronts that uh, that a an attack of this size and scale, the amount of coordination that's required to pull off an attack of this type um, is, uh, is, is quite difficult. Um, and it's surprising that there was no, that there is seemingly no advance warning for this. Um, at the moment, as of as of the last I checked, um, there were ah okay the number has updated. There are now uh, at least three hundred reported uh, Israelis have died, uh, many of whom are civilians, and as of the last count, um, two hundred and thirty two Palestinians have died. A lot of them are also civilians. Um, so basically, uh, the situation as it stands is um, a gigantic pile of war crimes, okay? Um, and it's been uh, uh, quite uh, horrifying to witness unfold. Um, yeah, so there's a lot of there's a lot of people dead right now. Um, and a lot of them are people, uh, a lot of the people who are dead uh, are not military figures um, and are not, uh, uh, were not armed or anything along those lines. <sighs> so uh, almost immediately, like within hours of the attack, uh, Benjamin Netanyahu, uh, sometimes referred to as Bibi Netanyahu, uh, the extremely conservative, and when I say extremely conservative, I mean extremely conservative. Um, Netanyahu is uh, a, like he he recently was went on the record saying that he believes that the Holocaust was a a secret Muslim plot to erase Jewish people. So he's a Holocaust revisionist. Um, he is a, a, a genuine, uh, un, undeniable fascist. 
uh, there is no ifs, ands, or buts around the policies of Netanyahu. And Netanyahu took to, uh, to uh, public television to announce war. Now, given that Palestine is a totally, and I mean this, a totally occupied territory, Palestine is completely encircled and completely controlled by Israel, um, the war that is being declared is a war on terror. And, uh, uh, and uh, that is the type of war that has been, the type of war that has been sort of waged over time. Uh, and I feel the need to be very real about uh, what we are going to witness, but we are witnessing the mobilization of a genocide. And uh, I need to say that in no, uh, 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 you know, no, like unequivocally, okay? We are witnessing the mobilization of a genocide against the Palestinian people. Um, and the reason why I say this is because a, a war on terror uh, that largely results in the deaths of civilians, and we will get into all of, all of the information around this in an occupied territory that is heavily policed, where people have no escape whatsoever. Innocent people, mind you, not combatants. Innocent people have no way to escape uh, and are being told leave when they literally cannot leave uh, is going to result in an, un, an, un, uh, an unprecedented loss of innocent life, of civilian life, Palestinian civilian life. It is terrible. And um, the conversation around this has been genuinely sickening to me. It has been uh, disgusting because the answer uh, uh, that people have been putting forward in this situation is to, to basically spend um, a lot of time uh, denouncing the attacks of Hamas which I think is a fairly easy thing to do, right? It's fairly easy to say, oh man, uh, this group has terrible goals in mind. Uh, it, uh, they are targeting and hurting civilians. However, uh, simply denouncing the actions of Hamas ignores the entire context of the now nearly half century long uh, uh, oppression of Palestine. And what I mean by this is that Hamas is the result, uh, is one of the uh, natural byproducts of endless oppression of a group of people. It is inevitable that if you choke an entire group of people to death for decades, that some of those members are going to literally lose their minds and become extremely unequivocally violent. And there is only one party that actually holds power in this circumstance, which is, of course, the state of Israel, which has completely and utterly encircled, enclosed, and put under martial law the all of the people of Palestine. It is uh, a bloodbath of a situation, and the response by a lot of people has been complete and utter inhumanity. Uh, innocents in Israel have been killed. Innocents in Palestine have been being killed for a very, very, very long time. Um, and there, and the leadership of the of the government in Israel is using the sort of consequences of their own oppression to justify even more oppression. When they're the only ones who hold any actual power. Palestine is an occupied, it is a 100% under martial law occupied territory. There is no, uh, there is no path to, uh, uh, to uh, stopping that oppression. And if you don't believe me on that, and I need to be very, very clear about this, okay? I need this to be communicated entirely that 
Israel has been found in violation of international law for decades, and they are still doing it. Even though they have been sanctioned, even though people have begged them to stop, even though there have been literally thousands of attempts at, di at various diplomacy, the oppression hasn't stopped. And so it is completely and utterly irrational to do anything but point at the people who are doing the oppression for when these types, when these types of things happen. There is no other way around it. There is no, the, the power is in the hands of the fist that is gripping a, an entire people's neck. There is no way you can, you can argue about that, okay? And if you do, if you feel that it in the need of you to try and, um, and equivocate or make excuses or, uh, or anything else, you are not only participating in the justification of a, a horrific apartheid project, but you are also helping grease the wheels of genocide. Because peace can only be reached if the person with the power is willing to engage and recognize what is, what is going on. Okay? I want to just read off a couple of things, like facts, about uh, Israel and Palestine, okay? Because I, 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 there, there's, there's a lot to talk about, okay? But I want to read off a, a couple of things, okay? I already mentioned that Palestine is not recognized by many states world, by, by like much of the world who are allies of Israel as a sovereign state. They are instead uh, uh, recognized as an occupied territory. Um, and there is a, uh, uh, a sort of bargaining group uh, that has been recognized as these are the people that you can talk to that are like the accepted representatives. But keep in mind, they don't really have any actual legal power. They are ultimately, at the end of the day, asking. The, the, the PLO, I believe they're called, are, are ultimately only capable of asking Israel to please stop to please stop killing us. That is all that they can do. They don't actually have that type of legislative power because they exist within a territory that is under martial law, okay? Now there are settlements in the West Bank, Israeli settlements, uh, where uh, basically Israeli citizens backed by the Israeli police and then by the IDF uh, will move in, evict people, uh, legally, quote unquote, evict Palestinian people and take their land, uh, take where they're living, bulldoze their buildings, and build new buildings on top of it. And in those places, in those settlements, Israeli civil law is, and this is the words used by the Israeli state, pipelined in. So you have lit a, a, a unequivocal, no questions asked, apartheid state. There is no ifs, ands, or buts about that situation. There are settlers who will move in at the behest of the government, take a place, and then civil law will be pipelined to those places and not to anywhere else. And that's the word they use. That is Israelis, that's the Israeli government's own word, pipelined in civil law. The apartheid has been recognized by human rights organizations worldwide, okay? There is, there is no arguing about this. If you do not believe me, I encourage you to please go and read one of the many extremely detailed port, uh, reports that have been published by well-respected, well-acknowledged human rights organizations worldwide. From the, You can go from the Libyist in the world all the way down to the more radical if you want, and they all can agree on one thing. This is apartheid. This is apartheid. There is a, there are, are two classes of citizens. Likewise, human rights abuses against Palestinians have been extremely, extremely well documented. And not only that, have been acknowledged by the UN, okay? These, these are not made up things. And if anybody tells you otherwise, they are lying to you. They are lying to you in order to grease the wheels for a genocide.
in 2022 there were there were multiple un recognized killings of civilians including children these were recognized by the un and they were concluded that these were attacks on civilians that this was not just collateral damage but that this was uh that this was israel knowingly engaging in attacks that resulted in civilian death including the death of children And again, this is not some fringe theory. These are acknowledged by the UN. In the Gaza Strip, which is one of the regions of Palestine, one in 10 people have access to clean drinking water. Um, this fact has been verified by numerous organizations, including the World Health Organization and UNICEF, okay? One in 10. And I want you to just think about that for a second, okay? Right now, I know for a fact that every single one of you right now who's watching my show can walk out into the other room and get yourself a bottle of water, get yourself a cup of clean water. That you do not have to think when you go to drink something because your mouth is parched, is there going to be shit, piss, uh, uh, E. coli in this water? Am I going to be drinking down pieces of dirt pieces of medical waste, pieces of industrial waste. You don't have to think about that. Almost nobody in my audience has to think about that. But only one, nine out of every 10 people in the Gaza Strip have to think about that every time they want a drink of water, okay? And keep this in mind, water access and infrastructure is 100% controlled by Israel, 100%. Okay, with the exception of international organizations that 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 transport clean water in. So there are uh, there are basically NGOs, non-governmental organizations, charity groups, Oxfam, etc., that will bring in wa water bottles, etc., from from abroad into this area. The water access and infrastructure is explicitly on the books, legally, in every single way, de facto and de jure, controlled by Israel. And one in 10 Palestinians in the Gaza Strip has access to clean water. Unequivocal, okay? The treatment of Palestinians has been, for decades, abhorrent. It has been disgusting. It has been choking out an entire group of people, treating them as second-class citizens, forcing them to live uh, in inhumane conditions, conditions that would drive people, that do and would drive people mad. But that's not it, okay? Because that's just the Gaza Strip. But I wanna talk about the West Bank. In the West Bank, there are 175 permanent security checkpoints which control the movement of everyday Palestinian people from, from place to place within Palestine and in and out of Palestine. These checkpoints uh, contain armed guards, uh, uh, razor wire fences, and Israel's, which Israel, often the official state government is very proud of this, a extremely complex biometric surveillance system. Cameras which scan and record your face and track the movement of individual citizens as they go about their daily lives. And it's Palestinians who are being scanned and tracked and followed and watched. It is Palestinians who have to go through these checkpoints and face extreme security and restriction of movement, not Israelis. In fact, there are videos from last night of Israelis being, being able to run through these checkpoints, showing their passport and walking through, and Palestinians being denied. 175 permanent checkpoints and guess what that's the permanent ones because on top of those permanent checkpoints there is a number of rotating and moving temporary checkpoints roadblocks changes to movement and on top of that palestinians have zero control over area closures at numerous points in the history of palestine israel the Israeli military has chosen to simply close access to an entire area, to neighborhoods, to regions, just 
like that. And there's nothing you can do about it because you don't even have a representative who can vote on that type of thing because you would live under martial law. Here's just a small stat for you, okay? Here's a small stat for you. From tw in 2022, is the, the Israeli government demolished 952 Palestinian structures across the West Bank alone, which displaced 1,031 Palestinians directly. Those Palestinians were not combatants. Those were civilians. Those were everyday people desperately trying to live who were moved and displaced, kicked out. In May of 2022, the Israeli military uh, forcibly evicted uh, over a thousand indigenous res residents of the South Hebron Hills in order to make room for a weapons training zone. They moved a thousand people who have ancestral claims to that land. These are, these are people who, who are herders. These are people who herd sheep. And they were displaced from that land so that they could find, they, so they could make a chunk of, of land uh, uh, designed to be where missiles and bombs and guns can be fired. <sighs> the stack of human rights, uh, 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 the, of human rights atrocities that have been committed by the state of Israel against Palestinian people is genuinely unbelievable, okay? And guess what? It hasn't stopped. It's going on right now. And if you don't believe me, I just wanna show you something real quick, okay? We're gonna take a look at something, all right? This is an official Israeli official, verified uh, Israeli official, okay? This was just uh, earlier this morning. I have signed the order instructing the, elect the Israeli electric company to stop supplying electricity to the G Gaza Strip. What was, will not be. So, Israel has supposedly declared war on a terrorist group and their response is to cut all power to the Gaza Strip. And I want you to just think for just a second, okay? I want everybody who's, I want you to just think, this is not just, um, this is not selectively cutting off power to a single uh, uh, neighborhood or anything like that. Hospitals will shut off. Can you imagine if your grandpa right now was, uh, needed, uh, was, was needed dialysis? or perhaps was on a breathing machine, recovering, or an ICU. Can you imagine if you just had a baby and that baby was born premature and is in an ICU, and overnight, overnight, you discovered the power is going to be shut off. Your baby is going to die. Your grandfather is going to die. Your father is going to die. You are going to die. You did not fire any rockets. You did not engage in any battle or anything like that. You don't even have, you're not, you're not even fully enfranchised. You can't even bargain or participate in an electoral system to get rights, but you are going to pay the price. And this is a, this is a, a this is, this is a real thing that is happening right now. This is not even a rumor. They are shutting off the electricity to an entire region full of people and, and, and a densely populated region of people. Okay. Let me get the exact numbers. In the Gaza Strip, there are two, there are 2.048 million people as of the last census. 2.048 million people are about to lose their power, to have their power cut off from outside. They cannot restore it unless they find a way to do so. Maybe if you're lucky, you might be able to find a generator. Maybe if, you, uh, if you've prepared for this, but keep in mind that the poverty levels are insane, so the likelihood of you being able to, to, to have a generator is very low, and the likelihood that you'll have fuel for that generator to keep it going is even less. And in all of this, in all of this, 
Um, is there a solution? I'm scared. I need hope. I want you to think about, let's think about, let's think through the morals of this real quick, okay? And I want us all, I think we can all agree that uh, no one, no one here uh, supports the killing of citizens, uh, of civilians, okay? No one supports uh, uh, the, the heinous murder of innocents, okay? We can all agree on that, okay? But I want you to think about what it might be like to live in that situation, to live your life knowing that uh, you and the people you love can be displaced at any moment, I want you to imagine um, what it would be like to have your rights uh, completely and utterly just not, not exist, to be able to be stripped away at any moment, to be surveilled constantly, to be treated like a criminal before you've done anything wrong, to be uh, subjected to living conditions that are unbearable. None of you, none of you in this audience could live under those conditions. No one. I know that for a fact. I couldn't do it. I would lose my mind. I'm sure I would find a way to perhaps survive, but I would not be doing well. Okay? Living with, uh, with, with one out of every 10 people getting clean water. And by the way, a lot of the water is so dirty, you can't even use it to clean yourself. You can't actually wash yourself because it's that dirty, let alone drink it. And remember that, again, all of this power for these conditions, all of the decisions for these conditions ultimately land in the controlling entity, which is the state of Israel. The state of Israel is, is the one that has created these conditions. The, the state of Israel has killed so many Palestinian civilians. It is, it is unbelievable. Okay? It is shocking. and well-documented, okay? And when I say well I mean well-fucking-documented. Hezbollah, not Hezbollah, Hamas. Why did I say Hezbollah? I was just, I was literally just looking at a page about Hezbollah because they said, uh, I think Hamas issued a statement to Hezbollah. Hamas, um, uh, uh, Hamas is the pro is is a is a is a byproduct. Okay, if you were um, let me let me just give an, an analogy real quick. All right, let's say that you're working in a lab in college. Okay, like a you know like a chemistry lab. You're going to your chemistry class in college, right? Um. And, uh, and in your chemistry class, um, in your chemistry class, you're working on your things in the lab and it's a really super simple thing. And you have a buddy, okay? Um, and that buddy goes, watch this, I'm gonna make mustard gas. I'm gonna mix these two things together and I'm gonna make mustard gas. And you go, don't do that. The, 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 Mixing those two things together is going to produce mustard gas and they go. Yeah, I know but you know I have a reason I want to mix these two th things together for for my own reasons I'm I'm interested or or uh, I'm, I think it'll be cool and Then when they mix those two things together and the mustard gas goes out into the class everybody gets mad at the mustard gas Do you know how do you see how irrational that would be? Do you see how irrational it would be to get mad at the mustard gas, which is the natural byproduct of, uh, of choking an entire people to death forever, for, for decades? The blood that is spilled by Hamas should be directly on the hands of the Israeli government, which enables it. Hamas would not be able to get a foothold if they were not, if there were not people who were in such abject misery that they would be willing to die to prove, to try and prove a point. 
that they would uh, 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 that they would be willing to do, do extremely suicidal action, horrific suicidal action. And there's no doubt about that. Hamas engages in terrible behavior. And that behavior is a direct result of the actions taken by the Israeli state. And if you think that I'm, um, if you think, uh, if you think that that I'm, uh, uh, I am uh, misrepresenting things, I want you to think about, um, just put yourself in that situation, okay? I want you to put yourself in a situation where you are a civilian, okay? And another civilian from the country that neighbors you and also completely controls your, your, your life, all of the legal laws of your life are controlled by that nation. And a citizen of that nation comes and says, your house is, your, your place is now my place. Move. And you say, I don't want to move. My family lives here. And then they say, okay, then the police are going to come and they're going to beat you and your family and move you, which has happened, does happen, and is happening right now. And you say, I guess, I guess I have no choice then. And so you move. You leave. And the place that you go to, because you're not provided a new place to go, the place that you go to is uh, the water is full of sewage and your children start getting sick and you start getting sick and you can't work your job anymore and all of a sudden you're living uh, in the worst conditions you can imagine. Where is your brain gonna go? Where is your mind gonna go? What, and you can't, there's nobody you can talk to about it because you don't have the ability to appeal to a legislation. The country that you're, you're dealing with has been doing this for decades and hasn't stopped, even when the international uh, community has, um, has told them to stop. Where does your brain go? What options do you have? A lot of people will just kill themselves, and they do. A lot of people would just end it, bam. Some people might say, I am going to flee and become uh, an illegal migrant. And, and even if I face discrimination in another country, um, even if I face discrimination in another country, so be it. Keep in mind that this type of attack is the is going to be used to like i said there will be justifications and framing used to grease the wheels of uh of genocide and it's already happening i already mentioned that they've 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 cut off electricity going into the gaza strip but of course they've already declared war and they've already started bombing as we mentioned, there has already been 200 and uh, last I checked, this was of CNN's numbers, at least 232 Palestinians have died and over 1,600 Palestinians are wounded. And keep in mind, these aren't militants. Again, this is civilians. And who has the power in this situation? Israel does. And that remains true even if hor uh, horrible attacks were just meted out on Israeli citizens, which they were, which they absolutely were. And I wanna talk about something because there's some really disgusting shit going on. There have been a lot of people issuing statements and the only thing they talk about is Hamas. And the only thing they're talking about is the attacks. They're not talking about anything else and they're not just just talking about the attacks. They're not just denouncing the attacks. They're also doing something else. Let me show you real quick. Can I show you what Joe Biden just said? Because uh, it's, uh, it's not good, okay? Let me just show you this, all right? While, they, while, while the Israeli government is stepping in to begin bombing and cutting off electricity to innocent people, this is what we get from Joe Biden. The world is seeing appalling images, thousands of rockets raining down on Israeli cities, Hamas terrorists killing not only Israeli soldiers, but civilians on the streets and in their homes. It's unconscionable. Israel has a right to defend itself full stop. Israel has a right to defend itself full stop. 
is saying we are we are we are 100% okay with Israel also killing civilians because we don't value those civilians equally. That is what that is. That is what that means. It's not just calling, it's not just saying we disapprove of Hamas because I think nearly everyone in the world can agree, wow, Hamas is a kind of a deranged organization. But it's papering over the the killing of the 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 killing of Palestinian civilians en masse, which is done under the justification of self-defense. It, it papers over the fact that an organization like Hamas can only thrive in conditions like what Israel, the controlling power, has created for Palestine. But I have an MVP for worst takes today, okay? I have an MVP. There's, a, uh, there's somebody who outdid Biden. Even though Biden's impact is going to be more, obviously, and I think that this is a heinous and disgusting position for Biden to take, a cowardly position that only enables uh, a what is what is inevitably going to be a mass killing of civilians, uh, the likes of which we haven't seen in a very long time in this region. Zelensky. Let's take a look at what Zelensky had to say. Let's look at what fucking Zelensky had to say. Because uh, I think this is one of the most shocking and absurd statements I've ever seen. Horrible news from Israel. My condolences go out to everyone who lost relatives or close ones in the terrorist attack. We have faith that order will be restored and the terrorists will be defeated. Terror should have no place in the world because it is always a crime, not just against a specific country or this terror's victims, but against humanity in general in our entire world. Anyone who resorts to terror commits a crime against the world. Do you know who resorts to terror and has resorted to terror for decades and has ignored uh, international reprisal for resorting to terror? Israel. And they're doing it right now. They're saying we're going to do it right now. They just did it. They're doing it as we speak right now in reprisal for a terrorist attack. Instead of instead of uh, being instead of acting as the power in this position, they are deciding we are going to bomb civilian locations. We are going to shut off power en masse to two million people. That is terrorism. That is fucking terrorism. That's fucking terrorism. Israel's right to self-defense is unquestionable. All details surrounding this terrorist assault must be revealed so that the world knows and holds accountable everyone who supported and helped carry out the attack. All Ukrainian citizens who remain in the risk zone must carefully obey all orders issued by local security forces and remain vigilant. Please be cautious. The Ukrainian Ministry of Foreign Affairs and our embassy in Israel are ready to assist in any situation. To support Ukrainians in Israel, we establish an operational headquarters. If you require assistance, please contact any of our diplomatic or consular offices in any convenient and accessible manner. Every life is valuable. We condemn all forms of terrorism. And yet, despite the fact that within literal hours of this attack, Israel a, a country with sophisticated weapons, with complete control of these territories was, and that's if we completely ignore the past. Even if we were to erase the entire past within hours of this attack, Israel was doing the exact same thing. And you don't see a condemnation. You don't see a fucking condemnation. There's a thing that happens, which is that there is an attempt by people who have a, a, a political agenda, okay? They have an agenda of control. They have an agenda of justification. They have an agenda of downplaying apartheid. There is a, a play that is made where the conversation has to be pivoted to whether or not you have correctly and sufficiently denounced Hamas. Well, it is ignored the fact that this that, that this type of Hamas attack can only occur as a result of the conditions that were created by Israel in the first place.
that this type of violence, this type of violent lashback is only possible. It is literally only possible if you have an entire place surrounded by fences in what has been described by humanitarian organizations as an open air prison. A, a entire country's worth of people that cannot leave at will. They have nowhere to flee. They have nowhere to go. They have no ability to bargain for their rights. They have two options, die, or break the law in one way or another. And some of that subsection that decides to break the law in one way or another, whether it's people who flee and illegally escape the country, whether it's people who, uh, who, who decide to engage uh, in, uh, in, in uh, a resistance against, uh, uh, against only against military forces, and don't engage in resistance against civilians, or whatever you want to call it, or violence against civilians, um, some percentage of that group is going to take the black pill and they are going to become the Hamas types. What happens when there is this framing issue where it all becomes about condemning Hamas, where that's the only thing that's discussed is that what happened just now is that Israel gets away with turning off power to two million people, that Israel gets away with bombing a bunch of innocent civilians. They are currently doing the ex there are 230, sorry, let me get the number again, 232 as of the last update, at least 232 dead Palestinians. How many of those do you think are combatants? Be real. So what we have now, and, and I want you guys to think about something. Has any, does anybody know why uh, there are laws against war crimes. It's not just because war crimes are bad. The reason why there are uh, laws against war crimes is to prevent never-ending loops of reprisals, which is exactly what's happening here, by the way. That uh, a war crime is done, a war crime is done in reprisal, a war crime is done in reprisal, and the entire time innocent people are dying. That is part of the reason why such strong laws have been put into place to prevent war crimes, because it creates a never ending cycle of endless churning violence. And guess what? In this circumstance, the simple fact cannot be ignored that Palestine is occupied 100% by Israel. It is under military rule by Israel. Israel controls the entirety of Palestine. They hold the power in this situation, and they have chosen in response to a tiny percentage of, of, a, of a Palestinian extremist sect doing something horrible to punish the entirety of Palestine. To punish en masse people who are already suffering. And let me tell you, what do you think the result of that is gonna be? Do you think that those people who who uh, uh, who uh, uh, who are treated that way, who see that even when they even when they live their lives and do not become militants, do you think they're going to look at this and they're going to go, yeah, um, I guess we're dealing with a reasonable situation here? No, the likelihood that they're going to black pill and become suicidal in one way or another goes way the fuck up. The blood that is spilled by Hamas is spilled by the state of Israel because Israel controlling Palestine entirely has been the one that has allowed Hamas to get into the position that it's in. And what we see is a, a worldwide looking the other way. Or, or worse, in our case, explicitly backing the actions of Israel. And I really want you to put yourself into the, into the position 
of somebody in Palestine, okay? A Palestinian person. I want you to take a moment and try and put yourself in that position, okay? Try and imagine where your brain would be if you could not leave the country, you did not have power, you have experienced mistreatment at the hands of an apartheid state for decades, you have not become a militant, you have simply tried to live your life, and now war has been declared and your neighbors and friends are being killed because uh, the state that controls your territory can't take responsibility for the fact that the conditions that they have uh, put upon your people created uh, a small percentage of the, of the populace uh, has gone uh, uh, joker mode and become uh, fucking Hamas. I want you to, can you even imagine what life would be like. I imagine many people here would probably take their own lives. What are your, what are you, what are you supposed to do when all of your hope has been removed? What are you supposed to do? And, and, and then to see all of this and you look worldwide and what you see is not a condemnation of the immediate response being, okay, we're going to do a genocide now. But instead, the response worldwide is But see, that's the interesting thing, Aska. You flee or you die, but you can't flee because your country is completely encircled. Anywhere you flee to would be fleeing into the arms of the military that wants that, that believes that you are at risk. Your, the, your fleeing would be evidence of criminal behavior, as it has been. It's treated that way. Fleeing is, a, is, tr is seen as, 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 as evidence that you have something to hide. It is abuser logic. It's not just abuser logic, it's, gen it's genocidal logic that is being applied here. Um, Israel has complete control over this country, and when a very small percentage engages in violent behavior towards the country, uh, towards Israel, Israel engages in collective punishment over the entire group of people that they completely and utterly control. And then people go, yeah, but, but Hamas. That's, abu that's abuser defense. And worse, it's not just abuser defense, it's literally genocide defense. It is greasing the wheels to make a genocide happen. That is what it is. No ifs and ands or buts about it, okay? Holy shit. Is this real? Is this, a, who, is this an actual account of this person? That's genuinely insane. It appears to be an elected an elected official calling for a Nakba, which will overshadow the Nakba of 48. Holy fucking shit. That's a parliamentarian. The Nakba refers, for those who don't know, the Nakba is uh, a term that refers to the uh, mass displacement of uh, Palestinian people in, in 1948. It was a, uh, a, a mass displacement event, a, a uh, forcible eviction. Uh, it was terrible. I, wanna, I wonder if I can get the number of deaths. Uh, 70 massacres were committed against pa Palestinians with 15,000 Palestinians killed during the Nakba. 531 Palestinian towns and villages were completely destroyed. It's really fucking sickening. And it's sickening to me that people are so vulnerable to, um, that people are, 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 are so vulnerable um, to the manipulative rhetoric that uh, obsesses over uh, seeing an issue uh, as like a as like a one moment issue.
that people are so vulnerable to this that they completely erase their humanity and and do not acknowledge the fact that a that the genocide revisionist current leader of Israel the country the state which controls Palestine is advocating for open war and is currently bombing civilians in retribution for a terrorist cell doing an attack and also that people can't see what that says what that says about the mentality that uh, that the people in power, the, the highest positions of power in the Israeli state do not see a difference between an, a Palestinian civilian and a Palestinian terrorist. They see them as the same, which is why civilians keep getting killed in large events. The Pakistan Ministry of Foreign Affairs issues a statement. We call on the international community to come together for a cessation of hostilities, protecting civilians and for a lasting peace in the Middle East. And what's the answer? No, we're declaring war and, and further encroaching into the territory that we fully and utterly control. It is uh, uh, deranged. And of course, on a sheer objective level, Israel has killed significantly more Palestinian uh, civilians through not through actual military action than uh, than any terrorist group could ever claim. And yet, it is all Palestinians who are being punished. It is further Palestinian uh, bodies being piled onto a sacrificial pyre. That's not even getting in to the countless uh, history building up to this. Israeli Prime Minister Benjamin Netanyahu has called on Palestinian civilians in Gaza Strip to leave now because the Israeli military is going to turn all Hamas hiding places into rubble. That is a quote from Benjamin Netanyahu, a translated quote. I want you to understand, you can't just leave a place that is fully encircled with border fences and checkpoints. You can't just leave a place that is encircled on all sides by the military, okay? Do you understand what's going on? This attack, this, this heinous attack by a terrorist cell is being used to justify a genocide. And over here in America, there are a bunch of Americans go, uh, who, who refuse to go, whoa, 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 hold on a second, and instead are, are, uh, are, 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 are freaking out about whether you use the correct wording or not when you said, hey, um, that Hamas shit is bad, but maybe you shouldn't do a genocide in response. Is this for real? I need to see if I can source this quote. I am only seeing this on uh, I'm only seeing this on Twitter. I can't confirm that. Although I don't think it's I don't think it's implausible. It's been really upsetting. It's been really upsetting people. Uh, it's been really upsetting seeing the way people react to this. It's been really upsetting seeing people just turn off their humanity and not be able to recognize, um, recognize the dynamic that's at play here. People literally have to make themselves stupid in order to, uh, in order to uh, not go, hey, wait a second. Um, hold on a second. That attack is terrible, and it's horrifying, but that attack cannot possibly justify 
doing the same thing to innocent people elsewhere. It can't. And it especially can't, given the entire context of the history that's been going on here, okay? Here it is from his account. For real? Oh, it is. Oh, he literally did. The defense minister of Israel issued a statement that it reads as follows. This is from, this is the, this is the direct translation from the Israeli, uh, the, the defense minister of, Is of Israel, uh, Yo Yov Galant. Today we have seen the face of evil. Hamas launched a criminal attack without distinguishing between women, children, and the elderly. Uh, they will realize very quickly that they made a grave mistake. We will change the face of reality in the Gaza Strip for decades from now. The citizens of Israel, especially in these difficult times, were patient and backed up the security forces. Just, it, it's, it's blatant. Hamas launched a criminal attack, and in reprisal, we will change the face of reality in the Gaza Strip, where two million people live. This is a genocide. You are witnessing a, a, the mobilization of a genocide. In real time, we are watching this. And if your response is to go, but the attack, you are, you are, you have no soul. Because we should be able to uh, denounce an attack, to be able to say that attack is bad without going, the obvious response is a genocide on two, uh, uh, directed at two million people. Would they actually genocide them? I don't know how you interpret we will change the face of reality in the Gaza Strip for decades from now. I don't know, I don't, I would be willing to argue that turning off the power to two million people because of a terrorist attack per per perpetrated by a small group of people is in and of itself a genocidal action. You have killed innocents. This is happening right now. What, how, when asks, Mama, do you think that Israel will allow them to return if they do leave? That's an interesting question, isn't it? What do we think? What do we think about that? I'm gonna guess, I'm gonna guess uh, it's probably gonna be pretty hard to get back to your home if you leave. People are asking me, um, people are asking me, what can we do about it? You can vote, you can vote, f well, <laughs> that's a really tough question. Uh, obviously, the first action that you can do is that in the future, and of course this will not solve anything in the moment, which is the horror of the situation, that uh, none of us, or very few of us here, are there, are like in the area right now and can do anything about it. In the future, you can make sure that you support politicians who have um, a rational and truthful perspective on Israel and Palestine, who do not support uh, unequivocal military action by Israel. But it's actually very difficult. And I think that what should be taken away from, uh, from this conversation is uh, that we are not free, we, are, we do not live in a world free of genocide at all, not by any means. That we live in a world where large state powers uh, de mass dehumanize and control the lives of marginalized people, um, and that this is an issue that we need to take seriously. That wanton state power is something that needs to be fought against needs to be prevented before these sorts of things can ever happen. That hyper-centralized power, apartheid states, uh, have to be opposed long before it gets to this point. Because once it's at this point, the, mach the, the gears are already turning and people are already being chopped up in the gears. And all we can do is bear witness to the truth of it and not forget. Never forget this stuff. It's very difficult to take, as a random American, uh, direct action on any of this. There's very little we can do in the moment. There's almost nothing we can do. But what we can do is uh, uh, denounce it. We can learn how to talk about it, and we can make sure that we aren't, that we take part in making sure that this can't happen again in the future.
and also that it that that it's not forgotten in the now because that is something that happens constantly this isn't the first time something like this has happened by the way the atrocities going on in palestine have been going on for a very long time and this isn't the first mass killing of civilians either if you don't believe me, you can just re- I, I challenge you, go read uh, the Amnesty International report on, uh, uh, hum on the humanitarian crisis in Palestine. Just from 2022 to 2023, you can read it. It's a 280-page, heavily detailed, completely cited report. Go read it. I did. That's what I was reading before we came on stream today. Killjoy says the part part of the problem is that this is what the end of a genocide looks like and people believe genocides start and end with one violent action but it's actually decades of violence yes it's not just de it's decades of violence and it's decades of dehumanization it takes time to build up a horrible situation like this. It takes actions, continual actions of encroaching on the rights of people, of taking away their power, of boxing them in so that they can be killed. It was it is building a slaughterhouse and people have to begin to learn desperately. I desperately need people to learn what the construction of a slaughterhouse looks like when we're talking about humans, let alone animals. Oh, I just read the Zelensky statement. Zelensky's statement was uh, embarrassing and pathetic, and it's insane to me. It's insane to me that Zelensky uh, uh, can say all of that with a straight face, given that there are people actively actively given the given this given the parallels between Ukraine and Palestine. It's insane to me that he can even issue a statement like that when there is a current power that is basically claiming that uh, the, Ukrainian, the Ukrainian military is basically the Hamas. Massive Zelensky L. Massive Zelensky L. Americans can do things. Leftist Americans can do things. Of course they can. Of course Americans can, can, can do things. But there's, uh, there's basically nothing that any of us can do in this literal moment to stop what's happening right now. Um, the government of Israel has decided to engage in a genocidal project. Again, they've, they've decided to ramp it up. And none of us, or very few of us, I would say, have, uh, uh, maybe none of us, have a direct line of engaging with the Israeli state or stopping a gigantic military that is already in a position uh, uh, of having immobilized targets from executing them. Uh, yeah, that was one of the articles I was looking at. And if you click on that article, if you go down to the bottom uh, in the sources, the number one source links you to their 280-page uh, document. This is the one right here. This is the document you can look at um, that was updated in, in the beginning of 2022. If you want to just go through and see, uh, the uh, this is the annual report that they update, uh, where they update talking about everything that's happened heavily documented, heavily cited. Just, just go ahead, take a look at it. Great, a great document to just educate yourself on exactly just how bad it really is. At the end of the day, I am just a YouTuber, okay? I'm passionate about politics. I talk about these issues because I want to be able to create a community um, that is, um, that gets to learn, and usually we have a lot of fun, but sometimes we talk about really heavy issues because there's no real other way around talking about heavy issues sometimes. But I'm limited in what I can do. And I also recognize that my audience is somewhat limited as well. Although, I don't know exactly everybody who's in my audience. There might be people in my audience with more ability to have an impact on here. Um, 
but uh but part of the process of fixing a problem is understanding it and recognizing for what it is and also knowing how to spot when you are being misled and statements like i've seen all over twitter today that are uh just sort of blanketly saying oh man uh israel's israel's gotta be able to defend themselves oh my god it's so it's so ridiculous uh uh israel i i hope that you get justice that they are greasing the wheels for an unbelievable thing and i'm not going oh my god the people in power in israel right now we know how they've behaved towards palestinian people we know what their rhetoric has been towards ta palestinian people this attack cannot be used as a justification for further murder and people don't even fucking think about it. Israel is currently sending sending artillery towards the Gaza Strip for fucking real. Wait, this is the this is the uh this is the oh my god, this is the Ukraine the Ukraine OSINT account that was that was saying uh oh my god, look at this shit. Hold on. This is the same account, by the way. Look at their reaction. OSINT Defender. Better find a boat or get swimming, lol. When somebody said leave, when Benjamin Netanyahu said Palestinians leave now because we are going to turn all Hamas hiding places. By the way, what do you think they mean by Hamas hiding places, huh? What do you think that Benjamin Netanyahu means by Hamas hiding places, huh? Think about that. Maybe another children's hospital he'll blow up? And then the OSINT defense, and somebody says, leave to where? They're blockaded on all sides. By the way, the blockade of Gaza Strip is in violation of international law. Right fucking now. Right now, ongoing has been. The ongoing blockade of Gaza Strip is in violation of international law. And guess what? Nobody fucking, nobody even fucking gives a shit. Nobody fucking even acknowledges it. They're all just like, Israel has a right to self-defense when they've been illegally illegally uh, blockading and violating the human rights of an entire population uh, that they justify from sporadic terrorist attacks from the most uh, 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 violent members of, of this group that they mass punish on, that they punish on mass. Fucking pure evil. But yeah, better find a boat or get swimming. Fucking disgusting. Oh, look, hey, who's this? There are two million civilians in Gaza deprived for years of political freedom, land, and clean drinking water. This is a evil thing to say. I'm not gonna lie. I have massive, massive respect for Vosh on this issue. He's been incredibly, incredibly based. Here's another thing that I, just a shout out to Vosh real quick. You claim Hamas makes peace impossible when Israel has killed far, far more Palestinians, deprived them of rights, illegally taken their land. If violence makes peace impossible, it is Israel who's made it impossible. But I do not think violence makes peace impossible. Extremely measured statement and also correct. Oh, here we go. Here's another one he said. Yes, the conditions Israel has inflicted on Palestinians virtually guarantee militant radicalization. We've seen this with terrorist groups throughout all of history. Suggesting peace is impossible because of Hamas is precisely the cycle that has to be broken. Um... But uh, if you're watching this video in the edited form, um, I wish I had anything nice to say. I wish I had anything hopeful to say. But the reality is, is that over the course of, of decades, Israel has choked the hope and the life out of Palestine, out of Palestinian people who live in unbelievably horrible conditions that are created by the state that has power over them, the state that claims power over them. Okay, you can't blame it on anybody else. The state of Palestine is completely and utterly under military rule by Israel, which means Israel is responsible in this particular situation. And what Israel is doing right now is justifying an absolutely horrific and genocidal series of actions against, against 
innocent people, okay? It is not just military targets that are being hit at all. What they are doing is as bad and at, on, a, on, a, on, a, on a local level, it is as bad as the attack that was just meted out upon them, okay? They are blowing up and killing civilians, okay? But on the broad history, Israel being a, a being in control of the situation has done so much worse and yet they are justifying this genocidal action on the basis of attacks done by a radical sect that is disgusting it should be renounced it should be opposed and i i beg of all of you listening learn to see what a genocide being built looks like Learn so that we can disassemble it before it ever happens. Learn so that we can remove power from those who want to enact this sort of horrific nightmare that should never happen on Earth. No human should have to be subjected to this horrific nightmare shit, okay? And by the way, that includes the attacks from Hamas. What, what happened to innocent people when Hamas attacked is terrible. But Israel has to take responsibility given that they control the entire space. And they will only make things worse. This will only push more people into radicalization because they have no choice. They have no hope. Their minds and bodies are broken. And all that is left when you have no hope is hate. And I would hope that humans could understand that. I would hope that empathy can exist and people can... Uh, can see that. And I also would hope that all of you, my viewers, will use your brains, you put on those thinking caps, and look past the rhetoric that is being used to justify mass violence. Thank you for listening to my show. I'm sorry that it's been so dark. And uh, let's stay strong out there and remember our humanity, okay?